So some of you might have seen uh, some of this new series, well, or new-ish series called The Chosen. Uh, and The Chosen, it's a very interesting take on biblical stories and the, the initial, obviously, it's, okay, it's called The Chosen, so what it's about. It's about Jesus choosing his apostles. So it's about uh, how each one of them lived before they met Jesus, then the call, and then how they uh, how they're now walking with Jesus. The full thing isn't written yet, so we don't know how far they'll they'll go. If they do ever bring it as far as the crucifixion, it will be uh, a difficult episode to watch um, because walking with Jesus in, the, in through the series, you get to know him quite well. Now it's not it's not it's not aiming to be a substitute for scripture, nor is it entirely scripturally based. So they do have some po- poetic license in places, uh, but. What the point I wanted to make today was that when they started it, uh, Dallas Jenkins, the, the director, uh, he had directed some some movies with greater or lesser success beforehand. But doing anything like this costs an awful lot of money. If you want to do it well, and Lord knows we need to do these things well, uh, we need like if you're doing anything in, in Catholic media, it has to look good. If we don't like, if, you know, if, if you get if you get any sort of like a uh, a, a magazine from a, an, an, an apparent apparition and it's all just on a, a badly photocopied it all the text kind of skewed you know what I mean it's all because it's been it went into the photocopy and got kind of jammed and they just hit start anyway you know you go yeah okay right yeah lovely apparition yeah sure like the, 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 the quality with which we produce these things I think it does affect how we see uh, the authenticity of it so if we're going to do a film about Jesus it, ha- it, can, it has to be good it can't be like cheesy and cheap like it has to look good, has to look the part. So he wanted to do it right. Okay, that's all fine. That's expensive. And then getting it distributed is expensive. Advertising it is expensive. So he was wondering, how, how will we do this? Because uh, we want to do it right. So initially when they started, um, they were charging whatever it was, the TV shows or the, the channels and that or whatever. whatever char- they were charging per view. And then COVID hit and... They were praying about it and they just felt this would be good for people during COVID to, to watch. Like to, to, now that they have more time at home, now that they have more time off, it would be good to, I think it would be good to make it free. You know, so just, what if we just make it free? Now, obviously, any financial backers behind the shows at the time were saying, no, <laughs> no, of course you don't make it free. Or make it, make it free for a couple of episodes you know, whet their appetites, get them used to it, and then charge them. So they decided to make it free anyway during COVID. And so many donations came in that they were able to plan the next series and the series after that, and the next season, the season after that. And now they're going to keep it free till the end because it's working. Basically, God is showing I'm, I'm getting behind this. And Dallas, Dallas Jenkins, again, the director, he, uh, director and author, uh, he said something which I really liked. He said... It's not my job to feed the 5,000. It's my job just to provide my loaves and fish. So my five loaves, my two fish, whatever it is. That's my job. The miracle, the multiplication, that's the Lord's job. I can't do that. So I'll do, I'll do my bit. I'll do the, the writing, directing, and all of that. And then it's up to the Lord to get it out there and to touch hearts with it. So when I think of St. Andrew today, St. Andrew, <coughs> you know, when we think of who Jesus chose and why he chose them. I mean, if you were going to start a dream team of preachers and teachers and get this, this church up and running quickly and entrust this incredibly important mission to, uh, to, 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 various, to different people, to a small group of people, you'd want to make sure they're well-informed. Hopefully, maybe someone has done, someone has done groundwork on them already, so that they should be well-versed in Scripture. They should be, in some way refined, you know what I mean, so that they can speak to the courts of the gentry and not slurp their tea, you know, so like, you, want, you, want, you want people who, who can present the, the, the faith eloquently, uh, credibly. Why would you choose fishermen? Why choose? Like the, it's like, you know, I'm from a farming background, so I can say it like, but, but you know, if, if you want to choose like, a dream team in Ireland, would you go like straight, would, would you go to the mart? And say, I'll take him and I'll take him. And all right, boys, we're going to evangelize the world. Like, you know, like, you might maybe, you might look in a, the- a theology faculty somewhere. 
you know, I might scoot around Maynooth to see is there anyone kind of hanging around with a Bible in their hands? Say, I'll choose you. Um, so he didn't go to the temple or synagogues or, and choose from the scribes, choose from the Pharisees. Maybe, like Nicodemus, maybe he could have made a good apostle. Who knows? Um, people like that. He didn't choose them. They weren't the ones he chose. So he chooses, like, rough and ready fishermen. Big, burly hands on him, smelling of fish and B.O. That's body odor for those who, I don't know, I'm not sure if that's a common expression. But, like, I mean, they worked all day and are horsing nets in and, like, dead fish, good fish, bad fish, got the fit, eat the fish. I mean, like, it was, like, they, they probably didn't smell very good. But there's, like, but they're the people he chose. So, Andrew, it's not Andrew's job to feed the 5,000. It's Andrew's job to give simply what he has. And I think that's, that, that's the lesson for me today. Like that's, that's what I'm taking out of it. Um, that it's not my job to evangelize the world. It's my job to, to give what I have. They might say, I don't have very much. Great, give that. Give that. Give, give the little you have. If you only have very little good, give that. Because this, it, the multiplication comes from the Lord. Whereas if we say, I'm not really qualified. I haven't really got much to give, so, so I won't give anything. Well, then you've missed the point. The Lord doesn't choose the equipped, he equips the chosen. The Lord doesn't choose those who are capable, but he makes capable those he chooses. So all we have to do is give the little we have and just not get in the way. <laughs> give the little we have and let the Lord do the multiplying, let the Lord do the evangelizing, but we do have to give what we have, whatever that is. So, like we're going to see all sorts of new saints in the future where just because of the way fashion and society have gone there are going to be new saints in the future who will have tattoos now they're not saints because they have tattoos right the, the tattoos represent an old life that they left behind but now they'll be going in like evangelizing and then they'll stretch out their hand and do this thing that i do and i'm pointing up to heaven all the time and people are going to see tattoos and they go, oh my goodness they have tattoos well yeah have tattoos previous life but now i follow jesus uh so I'm going to have all sorts of, like, imagine, like, the next, the first time there's a statue of a saint put up with a bloke in jeans and a hoodie. It, it's probably going to be Carlo Acutis, judging by the, by the direction we're going. But, like, who says saints have to have all these flowing robes that we're used to seeing from the Middle Ages? The, the, the new saints, the modern saints, will be wearing jeans and runners. And hopefully not have an Xbox controller in their hand. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, like, that's, like, that's, that's the new saints, the saints of the new time. That's the way they're, it's, it's going to be us. People like you. Who gave the little they had, but gave it all. So that's, like, that's what we can take, I think, from, from Jesus' selection of, of the apostles. Not choosing the smartest, the best, the most equipped or formed, uh, the most theologically prepared, the, the best verse in scripture but men who are willing to give, not necessarily huge amounts, but everything they had. And so St. Andrew ultimately gives his life in Patras in Greece, and uh, <coughs> a Greek monk there in the fourth century had a, a dream vision where he heard that the, the relics of St. Andrew should be brought to the ends of the earth. So they were brought to Scotland, which was the end of the known world, uh, hence the so and and then Saint Andrew uh, was con was um, crucified on a cross in the shape of an X. So the other vestment that I have, you might see, it's got these kind of red lines like that. They're kind of an X like that. That's called a Saint Andrew's cross. So that's why the, the flag in Scotland has that X on it. That's from Saint Andrew's cross. The way he was crucified on a cross in the shape of an X, and uh, the relics were brought there in the fourth century uh, due to the inspiration of of that that monk in Patras. Okay, just a little trivia there. Okay, so, lesson for today. We don't have to give such huge amounts, but the Lord wants to give us everything. The Lord wants, to give, the Lord wants us to give everything we have. And if we do, he will do the multiplying. We don't have to feed the 5,000. We just have to give our loaves and fish. And so we ask the Lord today under the example of St. Andrew, that we might give what we have and that we might witness the miracle of the Lord's multiplication. Amen. 
So dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us for uh, this homily via YouTube, via our live stream or via the various podcasts. Uh, thank you so much for, for being part of our extended family, uh, wherever you may be. Uh, if these have helped you in some way, if they have they've blessed you, if they've helped you uh, in your faith in some way in order to uh, facilitate our mission and, and, and encourage our mission, allow our mission to continue, uh, you might consider uh, maybe donating towards a holy family mission, towards our formation of our young people here in uh, a place near Clonmel uh, in County Tipperary in, in Ireland. So if you wish, you can do so through our website, holyfamilymission.ie, and there's a donate tab there, and we greatly appreciate any help that you can give us. Obviously, we'd be delighted for your prayers as well. Please do pray for us. Uh, this is not just <coughs> a battle against flesh and blood, but also, obviously, we're engaged in a whole spiritual battle here as well. So we need your help uh, on the spiritual front as well as on the material front in order to, to uh, allow our mission to continue. So thank you so much for your, for your generosity and for your support. And be assured of our prayers, especially on Wednesday, when we offer our Mass and our prayers for all of our friends and benefactors. So God bless you, and we'll hopefully see you or hear you uh, on a future podcast for homily. God bless.